Hey, welcome back to another episode of From My Mac to Yours podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kenya Marsh, your yoga mindset coach and yoga bestie. And I have a special interview with the founder of Soul Liberation Wellness and a new yoga system called Camille Yoga. And it's brought to us by the founder herself, Eternity Phillips. So I hope you're excited to get to know about uh, Eternity, learn about her yoga system, and be inspired to pursue your passion. So are you ready to listen to the interview? Great. Let's go. want to thank you for being a guest on the From My Mat to Yours podcast. And if you could please introduce yourself to my audience. Okay. Well, hello. I am Eternity Phillips. I am a yoga wellness educator and coach based in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I am, I have been teaching yoga since 2017. I'm certified in both Hatha Yoga and Kemetic Yoga. Hatha being the traditional Indian style and Kemetic being an African style. And I recently launched my own system of yoga um, called Kamili Yoga, which is an Afrocentric wellness system of complete union, because that's what Kamili Yoga means, rooted in Pan-African cultures and knowledge. So it is a system that is meant to help um, bring descendants of the African diaspora uh, closer to their African roots through yoga. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, it's great that you've learned one style and then shifted to another and, and you could bridge that gap. Uh, I know with our community in itself, <laughs> yoga is just like, uh, but to have those different styles and including one that uh, and the black community, especially that it could be more relatable um, and yeah. give it another method to tap into those roots. I think it's amazing. And that, that was definitely the, the inspiration for, for Kamili Yoga. Because like I said, I'm, I'm certified in Kemetic Yoga, which is African, but it centers just Kemetic culture, which is now Egypt. Um, so something a bit more expansive um, in terms of uh, just the way the structure of the system is. And that's good. That's the beauty of yoga. It's ever changing. You can always add and there's a new branch coming on at some point. So yeah. welcome to learn more about this style. But I would like to know, how did you get introduced to yoga and when did you get serious with it? So um, and I tell the story all the time that, oh, wait, can I cuss? I, I, I won't cuss. I um, could so. make it explicit, but... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll behave myself. Um, so like a lot of Black folks, I just used to think that yoga was some white people's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would have put in there. Because um, I thought it was just something, some kind of exercise, because that's the only frame I ever saw it in. I never saw it in like a philosophical or spiritual context. Also, I was kind of, you know, white people at gyms or studios, and I didn't judge that. I just, that's just what I knew. And so... Um, I went to a hot yoga class because there was a Groupon out. I was like, okay, you know, I'll try something new. And um, it was, it was, it was what I expected. It was a, a bunch of sweaty white people doing yoga. <laughs> um, it was billed as a beginner's class and all they did was just kind of shout out poses. And I'm like, I've heard of a downward dog. I don't really know how to do it. So I really just kind of copied the white guy standing next to me. I was like, okay, this looks accessible. You know, I, I look like I, I can I can do some of these things. But I was like, yeah, that just kind of confirms what I already knew. But then I actually got introduced to Black women yoga teachers in my community here in Charlotte. And I actually learned from those teachers what yoga actually is, like the actual philosophical system and the spiritual context. And it wasn't even so much that I like really discovered yoga it was more so I discovered that yoga was in alignment with the path I was already on it was like it gave a name to the journey I was already traveling I'm like oh wait this is yoga I'm doing this I just wasn't doing the physical part <laughs> so once I got that um 
that information, that knowledge, I was like, oh yes, this is this is for me. And so a teacher here in Charlotte was just starting off her yoga teacher training and she's like, I'm going to train you. And I said, okay, sure, yes, I okay, I welcome that. <laughs> um and from there, like it opportunity after opportunity um popped up and this is just where I am now and it's it's been amazing to go from knowing nothing to to where I am now. <laughs> that's the beauty of yoga overall. And that's something that I enjoyed. The camera probably cut off, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but I enjoy this portion because after interviewing a lot of different yogis and different backgrounds, how everyone came about on this journey has been so unorthodox. And this is the mm-hmm. beautiful part. Even for me, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. There was no Mm -hmm. yoga studio in the 80s and the 90s. So it was something I had no idea until I moved to Pennsylvania and fell upon it by accident, staying home. And then that Mm -hmm. journey just spiraled into different opportunities. So once you fully surrender into the practice itself, outside of that physical portion, you realize how much new doors opens up for you and how you start to contribute more as a whole and tap into that true gift that we all hold inside. Exactly, exactly. So that is amazing. I love, love, love hearing the stories. And can you share some of your biggest challenges within teaching yoga? Oh, man. I'm trying to remember what I had said before, but I can't remember. The biggest challenges... Um, in teaching yoga, honestly, the biggest challenge is simply the financial one, which isn't particularly, I know that's not really the topic for today. Um, because you would think that the biggest challenge would be, I guess, getting our people to to practice. But I, I really learned and observed and experienced that once Black folks really learn what yoga is and just like experience it, like, oh, wait, this is, I might be able to get down with this. And not to say like a, a lot of, um, a lot of people just automatically dive into it like, you know, head first, but at least they get that exposure and get that experience and get that knowledge that, okay, this isn't just what I've seen on TV represented by, by white folk. Um, so where, like I said, where you would think that would be the biggest challenge, it, it really isn't. Um, I do think the biggest challenge teaching yoga is when you are so passionate about it um, and like do this work full time is truly living on, on that income because that's not the way this world is set up. <laughs> like holistic wellness is already like, uh, I can't even say secondary, more like a tertiary um, thing in like, you know, in capitalist Western society, like people like, you know, that's that's not real science or real wellness. And so, um, yeah, it, getting people to, to really invest in, in this beyond, you know, your $15 drop-in class, I would say that's the biggest challenge. And that's not even something that is, um, like, relegated to just Black communities. Basically, anybody in yoga can tell you it's very hard to make a living doing this. Um, but I, it's been three years. And I've made it so far. <laughs> and I know you're just getting started. And that's the amazing thing. You learn from each year to be better than the previous. And you really do. <laughs> Being a yoga teacher, I started teaching in 2016 and started going from the parks and then realized that that wasn't my thing. So I wanted to shift to something totally different. And I reached out to the community, see what they wanted. And then I ended up getting into the private session thing. So sometimes the why you become a yoga teacher and who you have this ideal client in mind or group in mind actually starts to shift. Because the more experience you gain, you realize something's different. I can do this a different or in a better way. Mm -hmm. And it actually can become lucrative, but it doesn't come overnight. It is constant, constant (laughs) working battle. So, yeah, that is one of the biggest challenges overall as a teacher Mm -hmm. in in this type of community, especially being in a Western world. When you see uh, those projections of other teachers who are like, millionaires and you like how and it's just trying to make that connection as big as the ocean is for all of us to be teachers Mm -hmm. we have a group that we can all connect with and it's just finding that tapping into that 
is the, exactly. that whole challenge. And, and I will say part of that I do think is when your your target audience is black communities, because if you think about the ones who are really like really well known, like the, I'll, I'll use him as an example, Big Kaboom, we won't get into the whole, um, you know, other yeah. stuff with him, but he's, you know, <laughs> very, very successful with what he does. And it's um, an appeal that, you know, that the dominant culture, white folks were really kind of support and whatnot, because my target audience is not white people. Um, it does make it a bit harder. And that's not to say like, you know, black folks won't do yoga or won't pay for yoga, but anytime that your target is not the dominant culture, you're going to struggle even more. Um, because especially when you're not focusing on postures and poses and asana, <laughs> that's the exactly. other thing. Exactly. When you're trying to teach philosophy and really teach people how to really live yoga and not just do yoga on the mat. Um, because it's, you know, that's, that's just a small part of what yoga is, but it's so hard getting people beyond that. Um, and that's really where my passion is. But yeah, when you, when you, ooh, when you but when you're living with your passion and you're living through your passion, spirit will make a way. And that's all I can say for right now. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. So true. Those that, you know, you're on your right path when it just feels right and you look forward to it every day. Mm-hmm. And it's and, something else that yeah. you can think of but this. And that's how you know. Yeah. Exactly. I, even if other people exactly. don't get it yet, you know. When the time is right. <laughs> like, you, you still that. wait for them to wake up. Like, they'll, they'll catch you on soon. They'll catch you on. I'm just, I'm building the foundation. I've been foundation building for four years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watering these seeds. So, I, but it's like you said, and then when the opportunities keep presenting themselves, like I'm in a place I never would have imagined I'd, I'd be in. And, and the whole thing of launching Kanila Yoga, I tell people all the time, like, this isn't like a thing just to kind of, you know, be egotistical and like, oh, look what I did. Like, spirit has sat, sat with me, like, put this in me. And I'm like, okay, it's finally time to just do it because, I mean, what am I waiting for? We in a pandemic, everybody sitting at home. Just like, what am I waiting for? I've done everything else I know how to do. It's, it's time to throw it out there. So, exactly. yeah. We're in harvest yeah. season right now, and it's, it's time to feed your soul and, and start harvesting getting in touch <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to have to keep breaking down those myths and barriers especially within our community mm-hmm. and the more representation we have the more accessible exactly. it is slowly but it's it's heading in the right direction right right where do you find your motivation to keep you practicing and teaching yoga Honestly, my my passion is the motivation. Like I said, um, knowing that once my people get more exposure to yoga, that they um, very well can can embrace it. Um, that is what keeps me going. Because it's like I remember what I thought and what I felt about yoga, and I know for myself as a person, I'm already an, an explorative person anyway. So knowing that I, you know, I'll probably go a little extra mile that most people won't is another reason is because it's like we we need to know this we we need to know this it's not even about a, a cultural thing like you know well yoga really came from africa anyway it's not even about that it's just the fact that whatever system of yoga you're really speaks to you just the fact that it can literally change your life mm-hmm. um i teach at an hbcu here and i've been teaching there since 2017 the fall and just like the students I won't say every class or all everyone in the class, but there's always a good portion of them that are like, oh, this, I didn't know that this was what yoga was or what yoga is. Because usually I have so many students that all they've seen is white people on TV. I'll have like maybe a handful that maybe they took yoga before or some of my athletes, they're like, you know, their, their, their coaches would stretch them out and that was their yoga. I was like, no, y'all gonna learn some systems, y'all gonna learn the philosophy, you're gonna learn some breath work, and even if you never get on a mat again, at least you know what this is, and then a lot of them are so excited to tell other people, like their family, like, hey, you know what, yoga is really not that bad, it's actually pretty awesome, because they come looking for relaxation, they come looking for peace, because they get all this other stress in their lives, you know, being college students, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to teach you how you can get this. <laughs> now, whether or not you do anything with it, that's on you, but at least I'm helping to expand your mind. And that's that's really what my passion is. I want to expand people's mind in the same way, not even in the same way, but just to help people expand, expand their mind because my mind is expanded. Um, and everybody's journey will be different, but I just want to help you start. 
And that is the major key. And especially being a, a college professor in during this pandemic is it's like one of the major priorities. It's something that I constantly try to drill down as far as part of self-care. We sometimes mm -hmm. put ourselves on the back burner. So now it's time to learn how to put yourself first. And right. you can explore this style, but find something that resonates to your soul and you can continue this journey on, but at least let me plant that seed. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the beauty of it. And the younger the generation we can tap into and give that at least a, a little bit, then that would definitely trickle down and they could again have family mm -hmm. members come in and join in and then spread out that way. Exactly. Exactly. That's amazing. What does your typical day look like? Oh, see, um, <laughs> I, I won't have like maybe a typical week because it just, it depends on what day it is. Um, so my typical day, um, usually sleeping in, so I'm not an early riser. Um, mm -hmm. I do not get up earlier than 9.30 if it's not necessary. <laughs> um, it'll, it's a combination of teaching, teaching my college classes, um, doing some some production work, some studio work, recording lectures um, for my Kamili Collective, which is my Kamili Yoko um, community. Um, watching anime. I love watching anime. That's my that's that's my happy place. That's my self-care. <laughs> uh, it's it's oh my gosh. It's always something. It's usually some kind of research or setting up a website or doing some editing on a website, a lot of social media posting in terms of trying to market, although I need to find some some other marketing streams. Um, it it all does revolve around my yoga wellness work though, it, in some form or fashion. Like I'm just sitting here thinking about all the stuff that I just do. It's like, how do you kind of summarize that? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> it's all the little details that come together. Yeah. And well, do you find it that what helps is that you use a planner, you plan out your day to make sure you get these all in, or you just kind of glow with, go with the flow from day to day? I am very much a go with the flow person. I, I've, you know, I've had planners, I've written stuff down, and it's, it, honestly, everything is based on my energy, because there are sometimes I, no, well, excuse me, I practice a lot of self-care as well, and, and making sure I'm not overexerting myself. So there are some days where I'm like, I have all this stuff planned, and body's like, nope we're staying in bed today um and I honor that I also deal with my own like mental health um issues and so that's something that will divert a, a whole production plan like I might have things that I need to do and it's like you know what I I need to just be still today so honestly it's more so I'll have like a regular little to-do list of things that kind of generally need to get done stuff will stuff will shift <laughs> like something I want to get done on Sunday might not get done till Tuesday something on Monday might get you know done early um but yeah I just kind of play things by ear and and get it done that way I'm a procrastinator at heart and I don't mean that I procrastinate in all the stuff I do but I think that's kind of why I just go with the flow because um as much as I am structured in the way that I teach, I'm very loose in the way that I live. <laughs> well, there's your balance right there. It really is. It really is. It like, like, I have a whole plan of things that I'll do later on today. Um, we'll see what gets done. We'll see what gets done. <laughs> Whatever's left over, there's always tomorrow. But. Well, yeah, not always, but I kind of take that, like, you know, it'll, it'll be okay. If the, the world won't end, if stuff doesn't get done immediately the way I want it to, because when people uh, get too caught up in that, that's where a lot of stress comes from. It's like, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. And it's kind of like, well, do you though? Like, will your life just fall apart if something gets pushed down a couple of days? And that's something I've really embraced. It's kind of like, okay, you know what? This will be okay if I don't get it done exactly today. This will be okay if it's not exactly as perfect as I have it in my mind. Because otherwise, I would never get anything done. Because mm -hmm. I'd be so worried about perfection and, and overloading myself that I'd be burnt out. That so that's, that's, so that's a lot of where my looseness comes from. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that helps. And again, that's that attachment that a lot of us sometimes have an issue with letting go is uh, mm -hmm. that attachment to material things or just a rigid system. And once you learn to detach away from that and that it's okay sometimes, take a breather a little bit, you can come yes. back with clarity and even be more productive in some cases. 
So. Yeah, we, we definitely have an attachment to productivity and an attachment to results. Mm-hmm. Like we always have to be producing. And that's part of the, the capitalist culture we're brought up in. It's like, no, we don't always have to be like, even when you are producing, it should be out of a place of passion and joy. Like I work a lot. I am working constantly in some form of fashion, but it doesn't even feel like work because it's the stuff I want to do. Mm-hmm. So, but, but again, you have to detach from like, I have to do this and it has to be this way, but we don't, a lot of people don't have room for that. I have room for that because this is my, this is like my job and my passion work together. If I was working a nine to five, it'd be so much harder. And that's why it's so important to teach people like how they can re like just rethink their lives because a lot of stuff you just kind of fall into this habit of must 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 and then you ignore the self-care and all that all that good stuff that you need Mm -hmm. that's very important what is your favorite style to practice or teach now that you've dabbled in a lot of different ones and trained on a different discipline which one stands out or, or is it just depending on your mood um so my thing with styles in general is that I don't necessarily follow styles of of asana because to me well not to me when a lot of people talk about styles of yoga that's really what they mean is styles of asana styles of poses so power yoga yin yoga restorative all of these are still just kind of just hot yoga but a lot of people just don't know that because again yoga here is just what you do physically Mm -hmm. um my favorite systems are raja yoga the royal yoga the eight limb path um gyana yoga which is union through knowledge of course, comedic yoga, because that was my first introduction to a non-Indian system of yoga. And then mine, <laughs> Kamila yoga, because not only because it's mine, but because it's something the spirit put in me. And it's, a, it's actually inspired by all the other systems that got me to this point. So there are pieces of everything I've experienced and learned that have come together in Kamila yoga. Okay, that's beautiful. And with the Kamila yoga style, uh, that you have, does it also integrates any of the eight path systems and do you have a different type of system? Yeah, so Kamila Yoga itself is a system because um, it's about more than just like how you do the physical part. If anything, Kamila Yoga does not have a set way of doing your physical poses. Um, if if there were, I would just say free flow. I'm a slow flow person in general. So anytime I teach, like I don't teach power yoga or fast vinyasa, we're going to slow slow down, really get in touch with our bodies, connect to our breath, uh, let our energy and our breath guide our movement. So that, and I know, you know, a lot of systems say that, but just doing it slowly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, that part is part of um, Kamila Yoga, but the structure itself, there are three tenets. The first one is Nguzi Tatsu, which is three pillars. That's union with self, union with others, and union with spirit. The second tenet is Ibada Kamili, the complete ritual, and that's the only place where your actual poses come in, because the ritual is has to do with altar, breath, energy, motion, and then meditation. And then the last tenet is Eini Na Hekima, which is education and wisdom, and that is a tenet that deals with uh, self-study and learning more about Black and African heritage, doing, like, doing the the work to learn more about our cultures and um, our kind of our lost legacies because being uh, descendants of the motherland without necessarily knowing a direct link to what part of Africa we're from Mm -hmm. because of you know colonization and the slave trade there's a lot of information that we lost because uh, other traditions you know they they wrote things down in books like Indian culture has a lot because they have their Vedas and their scriptures. Right. African cultures were more oral, so we lost so much. And that's not to say that we can't reclaim some of it because it's out there, but we have to do the extra work of actually learning it. Um, mm-hmm. Learning from the ones who have done the research because it's not as easy as just picking up you know, a book from ancient you know, Yoruba and just reading about it. Like you have to, you have to do some leg work and you can't count on you know, being taught that, especially here in America, like we get Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and that's about it. <laughs> Most <Pretty> parts, <laughs> you know, basically we get about we we get the civil rights movement, and then they act like nothing else happened before that. <laughs> so we have that's part of Kamila Yoga is really doing the research to connect to your roots that goes beyond what we're taught, um, just at the basic level. That's wonderful, and that's that's something that's definitely needed. 
uh, again, especially in these times. Yes. Ooh, yes. <laughs> these these have... times are always, yeah, they, they, they seem like they're, it's always these times, right? It, it, it does. It feels like I've been saying this for a while. <laughs> yeah. For and, a long time. Seen it before we got here. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So <laughs> do you have any uh, one that provided any inspiration to you, a group of people or anything that inspires you? inspired you within yoga um in, within yoga specifically or just in life in general life in general who inspires you honestly I can't say there's a single person that inspires me is more so looking at the collective of just black heroes and historical figures that have just done so much throughout our history and I mean just you know pre-colonial times um, what inspires me is knowing that we can do amazing things, um, knowing that we can do amazing things that might not impact the world or other people during our lifetime, but can still impact the future and descendants. Um, but there are so many people that we can kind of like we hail now that they, when they die, they, they were like unknown. And then as time went on, some discoveries were made. Um, but just the collective power of Black people and Blackness in general, like, that's kind of what inspires me. Because if you just pick one person, I can't. I just can't. It's more so just that we have so many examples of, of what is possible, mm. um, which is basically anything. And that's kind of what pushes me through when I'm doing my work, because there's lots of, because when you think about just yourself in this grand scheme of things, we are small, we are, we are nothing. And that can actually be very, very, um, I won't say burdening, but that can, if you look at it in the, in a negative way, it feels like, well, what's the point of doing anything? And then there's, you know, there's so many of us out here doing this work and actually, you know, doing similar work. So mm -hmm. it's like, well, why do I need to do anything? Well, because I acknowledge that I am still unique, and I say I, but I'm speaking of everyone, that I'm still unique, that there's nothing, or there's something that only I can do because I am the only person that exists in this current state as me. And that alone is enough to do the work that I have to do. But just remembering is that that goes for everybody. Everybody has something to offer in, in some way, no matter what your passion or your purpose or your power is there's something only you can do. And I kind of just get inspiration from that because that that's what moves me forward. And yeah, if that doesn't inspire anyone, that <laughs> <laughs> probably we, we're all in this together and, and that is enough to, to be a great driving force to keep propelling forward. So that leads me to my next question. What are your future plans, goals, or dreams for Camille Yoga and, and your business or practice as well? The main thing I want with Camila Yoga is just to spread it and teach it. Um, I don't have lofty goals of like, you know, this is going to be practiced around the world. That would be awesome. And even around the world, if it's like one person in each country, that would be awesome. <laughs> one in person. the universe. Let it out there. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> um, because that's not, it's, it's not about, you know, reaching like just every everybody, because this is something that's going to grow slowly. I don't know how much time I have here. All I can do is, is work every day to spread it a little bit more. So my goal of Camellia Yoga is, is, like I said, to teach it and to, and to spread it and just make it known as another option within yoga systems. Because I say that just because something, just because it's modern and is brand new doesn't mean it doesn't have value. Mm -hmm. Even our oldest traditions started with one day. And even when they started, they weren't necessarily traditions. They were just something that people did. And as it continued and grew and developed and evolved, it became something, you know, massive and substantial. So that's the only goal I have. I don't know how that will manifest. Because um, like I said, even being at this point uh, with yoga in 2020, I didn't foresee this like five years ago. I, I never <laughs> would have guessed that, <laughs> yeah, you're going to make your make your own yoga system. What? You mean that thing that white people do in the gym? I'm going to do what? <laughs> like, so I can't say that I have any um, specific goal other than the teaching and spreading because I just allow life and spirit to, to guide me however things will go. 
um, that's all I can do is be open. And whenever opportunities pop up, that whatever they, those are, just saying yes and, and moving forward. I just keep moving forward. <laughs> and that's the best way to go about it and a mindset to have is just keep that open mind because as long as you're open to receive, the possibility is always going to be endless. And you can see it all just being more and more growing and flourishing from that point. So I might not be teaching yoga in five years. You never know. Like Camille might take off and just be good. I'm like, all right, well, I did that. What's next? I think I'm going to learn how to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Oh, so if anyone's interested in, in learning more about <laughs> Camille yoga or, or anything else you have going on, how would, um, where would they be able to find you? Oh, man, I have so many websites. So the main two, uh, camelioga.com is where you can find information about the system. And the website is actually very, very detailed about what the system is. Um, and there are some links there that will take you to the Camille Collective if, you, if um, people would like to actually join in and learn more that way. The Camille Collective is actually where I do my teachings, my lectures, um, and kind of focusing on growing the community that way because I've that I have learned that, that is the best way to um, concentrate my energy. If you like to just learn more about me as a yoga wellness educator, educator my brand is called Soul Liberation Wellness, and my um, website is mysoulliberation.com. So uh, you can learn just more about me in terms of just what I do. Well, you kind of already know what I do, but <laughs> outside of Camille Yoga, you can also see um, – uh, just a little bit about me, like I do sound healing. I, I teach comedic yoga. I'm, I am a certified comedic yoga teacher. Um, I still teach Hatha yoga. So even though Camille yoga is my focus, I haven't let go of the things that, that brought me here. Beautiful. And again, what I'll be doing is also creating a blog post and sharing all the links that you can read more on this. If you just jump into the middle of this podcast, don't forget to download and share it with others who you feel could learn more on these systems and visit CamilleYoga.com or collective.CamilleYoga.com to learn more on this particular system and support the eternity founder of My Soul Liberation and Camilla Yoga. Well... I want to thank you for being a guest on the From My Mat to Yours podcast. I thank you so much for having me. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you found it inspiring enough for you to go out and pursue your passion. Just remember to listen to your heart, follow your gut, and trust the process. Never be afraid to ask for guidance. Who knows what opportunity awaits for you?